great deal of skill to, to carry this project off. Uh, you're going to be pulling on uh, skills and abilities that you're not even aware you have. Thank God you're creative. You can do this. This is not a problem. Do be aware. Stress is <laughs> right there. And I love this is the roof of brain and look at what he's got a badness around his head. So I know this is a real, this is a very strong indication that that is a good project to do. It's really going to test your talents. You're going to have to reach into your past as well as into your future and pull those talents forward. But you've got them. You've got them. They're there. No problem with it. Okay? See? And if anyone thinks that I'm stupid, they can forget about it. Okay? They can forget about it. I have no desire to be mayor of Philadelphia. I have no desire to be involved politically. Excuse me, Gene. The only way, way we're going to end the problems with MOVE is to get the death penalty back in and I'll pull the switch myself. We need to go in and grab them by the backs of their necks. Fuck that peace stuff. I'm not wearing no policeman's billy club tonight, fellas. The last time I wore it tucked into my shirt front, a lot of broads thought it was my pecker. And if any of you is, listen, I'm, I'm serious here. If any of you think that I'm stupid, you can forget about it, all right? You can forget about it right now. The bottom line on me, on Frank Rizzo, people respect me. I'm going to make Attila the Hun look like a faggot. Even the criminals I arrested would vote for me. Look. I think the Philadelphia's cops, we could invade Cuba and win. I don't know about liberals. No, no, I don't know about. In some areas, I consider them sick. They are for open pornography, for prostitution, open sex on a marquee of our theaters. Yeah, I under, yes, well, I'm a lot more liberal than most people think. Look, I have great confidence in a court system that even a guy like me with my philosophy has rights also. Yeah, I, I understand, Gene. Look, they wouldn't be running in gangs if they was my kids. I'd be out with a baseball bat looking for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on a school system, we need excellence in public education. And I'll tell you what, if the teachers can't do it, don't you call me stupid. We'll send in a couple of policemen, okay? If you think I'm stupid, hey, Jane, you can forget about it. Doves are flying from all over me. I raise my arms, they fly out of my armpits. Now, I don't understand what it means either. Don't worry about it. Mm, yeah, well, in the 60s, see, during the worst days in the history of this country, nobody died in Philadelphia. I'm proud of that. I have no desire to be mayor of Philadelphia. Absolutely, I have no desire to be involved politically. The only way we're going to end these problems with MOVE is to get the death penalty back in, and I'll put the pull the switch myself. We need to go in and grab them by the backs. No barricades, Mike. No barricades. Women, children, whatever. In 1978 also, who was going to lead a national movement of ethnic whites pushing for equality and become, quote, a voice heard not only in Philadelphia, but across the country. In 1972, to take on the street gangs, we'll meet them in the middle of the block and just take them on. That's a challenge. <laughs>
for those of us who have been watching television since the year one here in Delaware Valley, we're going to uh, know the reference to this one. This is called Chief Half Clown. Obviously a takeoff on Chief Half Town, which we all remember so wonderfully, drinking that Bosco in the old days and presenting the cartoons. Eastos Assessaway. Yes, yeah, right. certainly right. remember that. That's right. For their tradition. I remember Chief City. Half Town. They have a party on Sunday night, school in which they show the costume off for the first time, play a little bit of the music. And, and the family gets to see what, because it is a family thing, mm -hmm. the families get to see what all of this is going to look like before it hits Broad Street. But the families don't see it until that rather late date. I, they may see bits and pieces of it, but I believe there. that's the first time there. they saw it all together. In just a moment. This is an interesting story. You know, lots of people say, well, the mummers aren't on television. Why can't you just broadcast them? After all, they're doing it on a public street. Uh, it has to do with the fact that they own the rights to their own performance. I think it's interesting that we can we can analyze this and we can talk about the history, or we can shut up and just watch it. And either way, <laughs> it turns out to be just as perhaps more interesting well, when we we'll shut up. We'll end up doing a little of both, Mike. I know that. But you guys today and doing a great job, and we're lucky to have some great camera work too. I really have a sense that folks at home can see right inside the parade with some of the terrific uh, shots they've been getting. Of course, it's great to be sitting here and looking out live on this great day. And the weather has has cooperated. Could you ask for better weather? You know, we, we, Absolutely. Right yeah, there's a, there's there's Linda. You remember Linda Tornella. This is the Empire State Penalty to the Comet Division. This is not just three penny opera. This is just a strut. broadcast is made possible by uh -huh. and notice how good my direction was about staying on that treasure chest that, that certainly worked <laughs> Something will happen eventually. There was Clark Leon. We just saw him for a moment. Uh, I, I told you. Promise. I told you that treasure chest would work. <laughs> Stay with the treasure chest. <laughs> and a beautiful babe indeed. <laughs> uh, wasn't that worth waiting for? Uh, describe that for us, if you will. Well, the wenches are. <laughs> there we go. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. Anybody who wears those braids, the long braided, those, that's uh, correct, long braided braid. pigtails. There it is. And Clark is somewhere in there. <laughs> the There's a shot of MTV, Mom. going to form a complete circle. There are side branches going off. But theoretically, the blood should be able to go around and around and connect to any one of those side branches. Now, there are four major arteries which supply the brain. The first two come up in the bones of your neck later on. So I always start to cut the brains by going right through the middle of the mammillary bodies. And then I know that I can have them and I can look at them under the microscope. <laughs> okay. Now I've cut the brain roughly into two pieces. And that's the remnants of that third eye. That's called the pineal gland. And it still has something to do with light. Because I'm watching This Is Only a Test, Monday nights, 8.30, Channel 54, Philadelphia.
All right. I believe the liberal is a conservative who hasn't been mugged yet. Yeah, that's right. And the streets are safe in Philadelphia. It's only the people who make them unsafe. I don't walk alone so I can be safe. I don't walk after dark so I can be safe. I wear long pants so I can be safe. I wear no jewelry so I can be safe. identification of the person or persons accused of a crime. Most requests for lineups are made by the defense lawyers at the preliminary hearing, usually three to ten days after the arrest. The request is made in cases where there is an identification so I can be safe. I carry no checkbook so I can be safe. I carry no address book so I can be safe. I look all around so I can be safe. I make eye contact with no one so I can be safe. I make eye contact with everyone so I can be safe. I whistle to myself so I can be safe. I sing to myself so I can be safe. I cross the street until your case is called. We encourage you to bring reading material, a snack, and anything you need to make your weight more comfortable. When your lineup is ready, you will be escorted into the lineup room. The detective in charge, an assistant district attorney, and a defense attorney will also be in the room. I avoid public transportation so I could be safe. I practice defense so I could be safe. I read crime reports so I could be safe. I practice screaming so I could be safe. I call ahead when traveling so I can be safe. I am escorted everywhere so I can be safe. I call him brightly lit glass. Each person will be identified to you only by number from one to six or eight. In most cases, each will be directed to walk back and forth. You will be given ample opportunity to observe them. The glass is one way. You cannot be seen by the people in the lineup. After you have had a chance to observe all the people, I'm always on the offensive, so I could be safe. I don't talk to strangers, so I can be safe. I talk to no one, so I can be safe. in God's name can anybody just say, well, treat them properly, forget it, emotions are free, don't do anything, pick up your dead, pick up all your wounded, walk away, everything's okay, he did his thing, but it's okay, you don't do your thing. Well, you can put a badge on all day long, but you still have a little blood pumping in you, you still have the emotion and the frustration of seeing your own people slaughtered, and then this thing comes out here like a milk-fed quarterback, and, and, he, and he wants to be a, a star? A star? I'd have buried him. I'd have buried him. Come on out. 
Okay, okay. Um, well, you, can, you can tell me how to get like, to fill it okay. up in your pot. So I just start now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, fill up the pots now. You're right Jesus. around down there. Okay, you got to move your finger. Oh, see you later, Teresa. Uh, bl I'm Blaze, Teresa. And I'm helping this. Uh, bye. Bye. I'm helping her out to find her way back home, too. But your father already knows where you're going. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> I just was kissed goodbye by my girlfriend Teresa. Uh, okay, you're down. I, I'm always been on these big maps. You're right in here, okay? At Center City. And all you have to do is go out to. Uh, I'm not going to show you just on this map right away. You're going to go down Mark Street to 7th. You're going to make a right that way and you'll see signs for the Vine Street Expressway. It's a highway. It's the only highway that runs across the city. Take that Vine Street Expressway and you'll be basically on this blue route here. We'll put you right on this blue route. You see that little thick blue line that kind of cuts in between there? That's what you'll be on. Then ringing it, brought it out. And you'll just follow the signs for 76 West, okay? And once you're on 76 West, and keep on following because it, 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 you kind of have a fork in the road there. I see that. You may drag them out by the backs of their necks. There will be a confrontation this time. Oh, there will be no barricades. I don't know. It's up to them whether they... No barricades, Mike. They're going to be taken by force if they resist. No question about that. Children or not. The summer of 1968, the Black Community Council met on Girard Avenue over a state liquor store. It was a hot evening of city mosquitoes and wet breezes. 
just three of us waiting for some news to communicate. I answered the call on the first ring. A black youth had been shot by a white police officer in West Philadelphia. We all jumped on the phones for more details. I drove the Firebird to the scene. We were so excited, I left the keys in the door. There were about a hundred people in the street already when I saw the young boy lying in his blood on the pavement. I hugged Odun and held him close and cried in his chest. We were so upset. We saw a police officer getting attention from six other cops. A woman was handcuffed, staring wide-eyed. She was sobbing. He shot my boy. A neighbor said the boy ran through the alley behind his house with two officers behind him, guns in hand. The boy jumped the fence and ran in the back of his house through the kitchen where his mother was. The officers followed when one shot rang out. The mother stabbed one officer in the shoulder and wrestled with the other. He managed to subdue her. The youth, he kept running straight through his house and out the back door, out the front door, where he collapsed on the street. I heard the sirens and someone shouted, the ambulance is coming. They took the officer and left the boy where he was. They put his mother in a paddy wagon. The com police commissioner arrived with a bus full of riot geared police. We were told to clear the area. It just began to occur to me that maybe this kid was dead already. Odun, who fought in the Vietnam War, confirmed my feelings when he yelled at a cop, can't you close his eyes and cover his face? Rizzo went over and pulled the youth's own bloody t-shirt over his face. The last thing I saw was another officer chalking a line around the body. Have things changed? Today, if a youth was running from police officers, he probably wouldn't have a home to run to, and certainly not a fence and a kitchen with a mother in it. A mother today would probably be working or maybe strung out on crack cocaine. Is there a heaven where Rizzo and a youth shot by police could both go to? I don't think so. A great man, Rizzo, a man whom nature has constructed and invented in the grand style. What is he? First, there is a long logic in all of his activity, hard to survey because of its length and consequently misleading. Rizzo has the ability to extend his will across great stretches of his life and to despise and reject everything petty about him, including even the fairest, divinest things in the world. Secondly, Rizzo is colder, harder, less hesitating, and without fear of opinion. Rizzo lacks the virtues that accompany respect and respectability, and altogether everything that is part of the virtue of the herd. If Rizzo cannot lead, he goes alone. Then it can happen that Rizzo may snarl at some of the things he meets on his way. Third, Rizzo wants no sympathetic heart, but servants, tools, in his intercourse with men, Rizzo is always intent on making something out of them. Rizzo knows he is incommunicable. He finds it tasteless to be familiar. And when one thinks he is, he is usually not. When not speaking to himself, he wears a mask. Rizzo rather lies than tells the truth. It requires more spirit and will. There is a solitude within Rizzo that is inaccessible to praise or blame. Rizzo's own justice, that is beyond appeal.